deal. Okay, so today we're talking about online collaboration. We're going to start out talking about tools. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about techniques, and we're going to have a um, like share out session at the end using one of the tools. Um, I won't spoil it yet, um, though y'all can find out soon. Y'all know me. This is really just for the recording at this point. Um, Sam, um, I do these instructional technology trainings. Um, let me know if y'all have um a uh idea for future sessions i feel like years of doing these i'm like yeah tell me what y'all want and i will bring in guest speakers as well love guest speakers so here's the link to what we're doing today um there are links on here to all the stuff um i'll drop it in the chat y'all can follow along um and then i'll release the activities as we go um but just for future reference this does have links out to like more tutorials and all the tools we're going to be talking about today okay so we're gonna talk about a little bit like we're gonna start with like why should we collaborate online again casual we're just gonna do a poll and kind of talk through it as a group and then we're gonna talk about trello jamboard google doc i also added in a page on padlet and google chat because i thought about it and i was like those are really great collaborative tools and then we'll do more and we can talk through some comparisons and then we'll have plenty of time for a q a we all might get out of here really um early who can say or we might just have great discussions and be here for the full hour it's a casual space. So to start, we're going to take a quick Mentimeter about online collaboration, what we like, like and don't like about it. And I can kind of flex um, also about what we're doing today. Um, so there's the link in the chat. Uh, so y'all can just click on it from there and answer the questions. It should be audience paced, so you can kind of do it on your own. It works on a phone or on your screen. Um, yay. Anyone just came in? I'll drop it one more time. I don't know why I would ever want to reset the results, but here we are. Uh, so if you need the code, there it is 39246012. Cool. So I see y'all filling it out. Thanks. So um, great. We're not going to talk a lot about Zoom today, just because I feel like that's a whole thing. So on the next slide, you'll see we're going to talk about mostly today, we're actually talking about like asynchronous forms of collaborating online. Um, if we have time at the end, I would love to hear from y'all or I can talk about some things that I do in Zoom in terms of collaboration um, since we are in Zoom right now, since we're in Zoom a lot. Um, if we like this and uh, like this idea of like Thinking through kind of asynchronous collaboration, we can talk about having a Zoom session as well. Um, so Google polls, yes, love it. Instruction meetings, yes. Using GChat, chats, yeah. We're gonna talk about GChat today. I'm sure y'all are using it effectively. We want to talk about some tips and tricks. Think through that. Google Sheets, yes. So there's just so many Google apps, and they're also great to collaborate with. I love it. We do have we've done ULVLC sessions in the past on like Google workflows for work, um, and we've done it. Uh, Rachel did one. On board. Um, so stay tuned. But that's the two we're going to talk about today. But we can talk about more if we have time. Okay. So Trello, great. We're going to talk about Trello. Things other than Zoom, great. I'm not talking about Zoom a lot today. Um, great. So software that I'm unfamiliar with, great. Hopefully we talk about some tools. Great. Great. I'm on the right track. Um, and again, these are casual, and I think we just have plenty of time today, and it's that first week of school. So I definitely want this to be conversation-based as well. Um, so if there's anything else that y'all want to go through as we kind of go through these tools and I demo them, um, please just let me know, again, through chat or um, you can unmute. This is again, this is a casual space. So today we're really going to be talking about um, Google Apps. We're going to focus in on Jamboard and Google Docs and give some examples. We're also going to talk about Trello, Padlet, and Google Chat. Um, so again, we're really kind of focusing on today asynchronous collaboration that actually has some synchronous components as well, right? Like Google Chat can be synchronous or asynchronous. Um, so some synchronous ones that we use, and of course these tools can be used that way, are Jamboard, Padlet, and Google Chat. 
that um, all the Google apps can be used synchronously. The only one that typically isn't used synchronously that we're going to talk about today as well is uh, Trello. And again, we're not going to talk about Zoom a lot today, but all of these tools, as you'll see, can work in terms of how you collaborate within a virtual online space like Zoom, or whether you're teaching a class synchronously or asynchronously, or whether you're doing a conference, right, um, where you are um, looking to have some kind of interaction with your audience uh, those ways. We're not really going over polling today. Y'all saw me use Mentimeter. Um, I have done sessions on the past on polling uh, and how it works online and face-to-face. -face. Uh, so if y'all have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, but we're really talking about more of this online collaboration asynchronously. And really, I'm also thinking about using it for projects as well as um, in a workspace environment, you know, right? So like Google Chat um, and Trello specifically. Um, and then Jamboard and Padlet can be used for kind of like polling audiences you'll see at the end, um, but it also can be good for like brainstorming, which that's how we're kind of talking about as well. So some other things that come out when you talk about online collaboration sometimes that again, we could have whole sessions on if you're interested, are um, Microsoft, of course, a competitor to Google, but we're going to focus on Google today, um, our learning management system Canvas, but again, we could have whole sessions on that. There's tons of productivity apps that function like Trello, right, like Trello is one of many. Um, so um, we can have a conversation, we can do a comparison. I'd love to hear y'all's opinion. Trello is just what I use the most. Um, and we're going to go over a lot of the features of Trello today. But the nice thing about Trello is like, people use it very differently. And I'm sure there's ways I could be using it more efficiently. So definitely speak up. So Canva is the graphic design site um, that can be used, you know, right in collaboration with people with editors. But again, since it's more graphic design, we're not gonna talk about it, of course, websites. And then of course, any integration can be collaborative, right? So Google has tons of integrations with each other and with other apps. Like for one example is that, you know, Zoom hooks with my Google calendar and I can create synchronous online collaboration meetings on there just seamlessly. Uh, so if, again, if we want to have a session or talk about any of these integrations, let me know. And if there's others we want to talk about at the end, we have we have time. Okay. So without further ado, we're just going to we're going to get going on the actual tools. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Trello. So if you use Trello, let me know in the chat. I really definitely want, I mean, I want to hear about uh, how people use Trello because I just find Trello really fascinating because People use it really differently. It's really cool. So it's a web-based Kanban, Kanban style um, list making application, which means it's these visual right boards. Um, and you can use them in a lot of different ways. You can set it up really differently um, in terms of list making application. So it can be used as a group or individually as your to-do list, right? Um, and as well as for group projects. So I'm gonna show you today some group projects where we've used Trello um, and we're gonna talk about, I'll show you how I use it individually, how I use Trello as well. And we're gonna talk about how it can link to all these different things through power-ups. So a challenge of Trello is that people visualize things differently and use it really differently. Differently. And then also Trello is, you know, not everyone's specific, like familiar with it. So if you're like, we're going to do a group project on Trello, not everyone has to um, remember, you know, has to know about it. And then you have to remember to keep it up to date, which is like a challenge I have on mine um, as well. So, um, so Lindsay said at DU, they use it to track their work in relation to the library's strategic plan. Ooh, yeah. And then there's a, a bar face. <laughs> um, so yes feel you. It, it can be a lot. Um, and so Leah says that she only uses it as an end user. I respond to Trello boards that other people set up. Yes. Um, Jenny points out, I always want to use Trello, but then I don't check it for a little bit. So that's what I'm talking about. I have to remember to keep it up to date. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you on Trello where you can set up notifications on it, as well as how you could integrate it with other apps in case you want it to be like reminded and emailed from it. Um, but we'll see. Again, the nice thing about Trello that I like about it too, is that you can also just like, if you get overwhelmed by it or don't like it, like, you know, change it up to whatever works for you. So here's a link to tutorials on Trello. I mean, we're not going to go into a huge amount of detail today, um, but let's get started on going to the actual interface. And I'm going to show you some examples. Okay. Trello. There it is. 
Okay, so you just can go to Trello.com. Trello is a UNCG click wrap to prove tool. Um, so you can use it for um, stuff. It is okay. Um, click wrap, if y'all don't know, is a, like having things approved through legal counsel and having ITS be able to officially um, say it's okay to use. That doesn't necessarily mean that UNCG has a subscription to it. Um, as far as I know, we don't have like a power subscription using this Trello, but you get a lot of features with the way that you can use it for free, um, but it is okay to use. You can see here, you can create workspaces to work as a team, right? Where you could create multiple groups in a, um, multiple boards, right? Here's a board in these spaces. Um, so you can see here, like I have a personal one. God, I haven't looked at that personal one <laughs> I had stuff like move to a house, which I did years ago. Who can say what I put on there? But you can see here like group projects I've been put on through NCLA, right? Such as the conference website, um, as well as um, transitioning the NCLA website to something called Wild Apricot. Um, so we can look at those. There's nothing inappropriate about looking at those. Um, but then we do use them to set up our research tutorials um, that were recently renamed Ultra, thanks to Anne. Um, and so we use it for that kind of group work. And then this is my personal to-do list. So I'm going to start with my personal to-do list. I have my personal to-do list set up with categories and I tag things. We're going to talk about this. Um, it's private. And then I'm going to show you some things that you can do here. I set up my background to be trees. You can change your background, um, you know, in that way. Um, so this is an example of a personal to-do list. So a nice thing about Trello is that people do make a lot of Trello boards public. So you can Google like, you know, how people are using Trello and get inspiration on how they um, um, like to organize their spaces in terms of Trello. So this is my personal to-do list and I have it set up into categories of my work, right? Like um, my scholarship, my online learning stuff, my specific online learning objects I wanna create, my liaison stuff, um, assessment, Canvas, campus collaborations, um, NCLA committees, health science, science team, and training, right? So if I get an idea, the way I use this to-do list is if I get an idea at my work or if I think of something where I'm like, I don't have to do this right away. I just go on here and add a card for an idea. So for example, it's like, you know, I would love to one day make a guide on like making our Google slides accessible, you know, but I don't really necessarily have a deadline on that. So you can click on a card and you can add um, different things to a card, right, within Trello. You can add members. So even with the personal list, you could add one person if they're a member of Trello to your card. You can also set up labels. So if you hit the labels, I have mine set up to be these, in progress, waiting, have not started, issues, ongoing. Um, so then I can tag it and quickly look and see like, oh, am I already working on this? Have I not started on this? That kind of thing. Um, and you can set these up to be whatever you want in whatever color you want uh, by clicking on the labels on your own. You can also set a due date for a card, right, this way. Um, just click on date and add a due date. You can also add individual checklists to your card. So if I'm like, oh, you know, I could add a checklist and then add an item, um, create uh, template for this tutorial, right? And you can also assign people to individual checklists as well as due dates on the card. And you can add um, something else, right? And then you can see when you're done, you can then um, check it off and it checks it off, but it still shows that you did it. And then it shows that you're 50% done on a checklist. So um, another thing you can do is that there is something called power ups within Trello. Um, so you can add on integrations to your Trello boards um, that are with other apps. Um, so um, it is, um, you can click on power up and you can um, see I have one set up for Google Drive. So this means that Trello integrates with Google Drive and I can hook a Google Doc and search my Google Drive and hook a slideshow, right, anything like that to a card. Um, so for example, I might, for my instruction, I could go into the CTR 416, I'm teaching for them this semester, I could click on my Google Drive power up, I could then, um, you can create something from scratch, but you can also attach a file linked to my Google Drive account, do all this stuff, and then you say attach a file and then it allows you to search within your Google Drive. So I am going to look for 416. Let's say I want to hook to this slideshow. And now my slideshow for 416 is hooked in here. 
So when I go back later to look at this, I can see I have an attachment and I can go straight to my slides for that instruction session. So it's a nice integration. Um, shout out to Brown for showing that to me. Um, it's really nice. So again, you could also set up um, a link, right? Like if it's a project somewhere else, you could link to your LibGuide here, add a description to it. Uh, a lot of different things you can do with the card. Um, if I wanted to add a label, I could add in progress, right? You can, this is, um, Trello is very slide and drop friendly. So if you're like, I want to move something to the top to see it, you can do it that way. And I've also seen other people use the to-do list feature where you might have a like done, you know, category, and then just, you can slide all your cards once they're done over there and um, do it that way as well. It's really, again, just how your brain works. As you can see, it could be organized in a lot of different ways. So one thing that you can also do with Trello, like someone was talking about, like, you got to remember to update your Trello board, which I I am very guilty of this. You can set up automation. Um, you can create rules where um, that automatically respond to actions, schedules, or a card's due date. You can set up buttons on the back of every card at the top of the board, and you can email reports, such as a weekly summary of your cards that are due within seven days. So this could be really useful if you're setting it up with um, due dates, right? Like if you had, for example, all my instruction with due dates, it would email me reminders that my instruction is coming up. Um, and what I have to do to get ready for my instruction. Um, you can also, of course, set up notifications. Um, so if you click here, there's um, uh, ways you can do that as well. Um, gosh, I just saw it. You can set it up so that like, you know, you would get an email, right? Every time something happens with a group board. I think that's not showing up because I don't have anyone on this board with me. If I wanted to make this public for any reason or share it, you can change it so that everyone on Brown's team workspace can see and edit this board, or I can make it public where anyone could Google and see my to-do list. So I don't know if anyone would want to do that. Are there any questions about individual boards? I'm going to go into a, a project board next. Um, and again, that's just how my brain works. I bet that other people in this room and other people at the library would say that their to-do list on Trello looks totally different. Um, but yeah. Sam, I have a quick question. Yeah. I just, um, tried to organize all my things on Trello yeah. <clears throat> like two days ago uh -huh. and I put due dates on all of my things. Uh -huh. Um, but they're still in the order that I input them. Do you know if there's like a sort feature or do I just have to drag them manually? Yeah. I wonder if it's under automation and you could create a rule for it. I don't do this okay. a lot, but, um, this is a somewhat new feature, um, but this is all the stuff that you can automate it, right? And so then you um, create a rule and then it should sort and organize it based on the rules you set up. Okay, I'll look into it. Thank you. Yeah, and I've also, oh, and automation tips too. Board button, card button, so yeah. Also, um, Brown did a session for, um, before we even had the ULV VLC for liaisons like years ago. Um, and he might be a good person to come back and talk about Trello. He um, is really good at Trello. If any, I don't want to like say email Brown. Um, he did not give me permission, but he's very good at Trello if you run into him and want to ask him anything about Trello. So this is a um, group Trello board that we have um, on the UNCG Libraries research tutorials. So um, the tutorials are here, right? And we have a collaborative workflow within um, ROI or really anyone in the library can join our collaborative workflow where the way these are made is that people create the modules on Google Docs and then I input them into this great system that Eric made for us. Um, shout out to Eric for making us a great collaborative system, um, right? So in order for us to kind of know what's going on or see this board visually right in terms of what needs to be done and what's been done is that we have this trello board so we have categories up here of what we're making right in terms of that stuff and then we have groups on uh you know people in roi are on this board so in order to add people we can just share and add people um if they have a trello account right um or we can copy a link where people can join as a member of that as well um we have made this board public because we have shared this workflow at conferences and stuff um, and there's no like private information it's just what we're kind of planning in terms of that um, so it's fine and then um, you can see here that in these categories we do actually use this as a more drag and drop feature that instead of um, archiving a card when we're done because when you're done with the card you can't archive it we drag it 
into the finished field. So we can see who did it, who worked on it, um, you know, that kind of thing as it went. And if there were any attachments, we can kind of see what went on that way. We also, for this kind of group thing, have, um, what is it, categories where other information, right? Like other logistics. So like, if I'm like, oh, do you wanna know what tools can be used with this? We have suggestions of what you could use and integrate with these tutorials, right? Um, in terms of other tutorial options that you can integrate with this. Um, and then as well as tips, like there's a laptop in Eric with Camtasia available. Um, so people can kind of see, you know, again, advice for workflow um, of this tutorial as well. Um, we also use the tag feature. So if you click on the tags, um, you can they'll actually show. You know, let me try to double click. There, well, there you go. So then you can see what the tags mean when I double click like that. So you can see we have core, which means we wanted it to be happening as quickly as possible, whether it should be for research basics or core, and then whether it should go in advanced research um, as well. So this is an example of a um, project one um, for like kind of to-do list for a group project. So yeah, we got to rename it uh, to, to Ultra for sure. Oh, so here's one that we did for, uh, I guess we didn't use that effectively. I wanted to actually do this because um, this was a big transition. Um, you can see here, we they had it just, this was a project where we were migrating the NCLA, North Carolina Library Association website, right, to a new platform. Um, so we had it set up for waiting, set up issues, investigations, web pages to move and create, um, and then blocks, right, in progress, done. And then answered address questions. So again, it just really depends on how you set it up, uh, who's doing what, how your brain works, it can be used in a lot of different ways. Questions, concerns, stories about Trello. Again, everyone uses Trello really differently. <laughs> okay. Well, if anyone has any good Trello stories or ideas, just let me know in the chat. Um, and again, we have done full Trello sessions in the past and we could do it again if people are interested. Um, that is just a brief thing about Trello. So the next thing I was gonna talk about is something called Jamboard. It's a Google app. It's a digital interactive whiteboard developed by Google. So it has little sticky notes that you can add anonymously. So it can be nice for online collaboration in terms of activities, brainstorming with a group, um, as well as like um, incorporating asynchronous or synchronous discussions. So some challenges with it is that not everyone is familiar with how they work. So you kind of have to do some setup, do some training on it, which is fine. Um, you need to create an editable link through Google Share feature, which means that um, to make it fully editable, it means that everyone who uses it can also delete content, right, um, in live time, or they could put like, I guess, inappropriate content, depending on your audience. Um, there's also a 50 person limit. So this could work with some conferences, right, some group collaborative spaces, but for large, large groups, um, you would need to think about other solutions. Um, but that is the basics of Jamboard. So there's a link here to tutorials on Jamboard from um, Google. It's a Google EDU um, thing. Um, and then um, we're going to look at a Jamboard now. So I see in the chat, y'all are talking about a Trello work session. I love it. I think we should all get together and show our Trello boards and think about ways we can make our Trello board better. <laughs> um, so yeah. Okay. So here is an example of um, the way I use Jamboard for an NC Live presentation on um, UDL and leadership. Jenny and I did this um, session together for NC Live on um, how to use universal design for learning with leadership styles. Um, so here's an example of how it is, right? You have a link to the Jamboard with an editable link. Um, I did put a little, this page here with instructions, right? Like of how it's gonna work. You can see the interface here where it can zoom in. You can set background, clear frame. You know, again, this is the power people have with this. And then you can click on arrows to move Jamboard forward to the different prompts um, and then how you add it. So here were the prompts, right? Um, so how can we raise awareness of UDL and library workplaces? And then people could go here, click on a sticky note, 
you can change the color. So I'll change it to here and say, uh, and then you could add something and then you push save and then it adds it. And then you can keep going. Um, so again, it allows you to enter as many as you want. You can make it bigger, move it around, um, click on here, edit, duplicate, delete, and even order it by sending it backwards or for, uh, I guess for it's already forward. Um, so yeah. Oh, nice. So um, Lindsay points out that Mira board, is that how you say that? Mira board um, requires a login account, but doesn't have some of the negatives of Jamboard. The owner can lock aspects of the page and there's also cool templates. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think Jamboard, similar to Padlet, um, there's not like a, it's kind of like all or nothing. So um, I would use this personally in spaces where you feel like it's not going to get out of control. Like I haven't used it nice uh, a lot um, for uh, things beyond small classes and conferences um, and then brainstorming activities with like committees within um, ACRL, like, you know, like library committees or you internally or externally. And I'll open up um, Miro, like mirror, yeah, um, in a little bit. I have one I can pull up and show people okay, if they're great. interested. I would definitely like start with an easier one like Padlet or Jamboard. Um, you'll see why in a bit. But mm -hmm. it, like if you're if you really love Padlet and you want something that has a little more functionality, Miro board might be a cool option for you. Nice. So yeah, once you create a Jamboard, it's jamboard.google.com, um, then you can share by like the same way you share any Google document, you can share and then anyone with the link can edit. And then notice here for like this kind of thing, we did use a Go link. So um, if y'all don't know about Go links, um, you can go to go.uncg.edu and log in with your UNCG account and you can create tiny URLs, go.uncg.edu, right? And then um, that way, so you can take a longer link like to a Jamboard or a Google Doc, um, put it as a target e URL where you can then randomize it or then specify my own link. And you could say, you know, ULVLC Jamboard, et cetera. So that is a good way to use these kind of like longer links, but still make them editable. Okay, so that's an example of how we've used Jamboard, how I've used Jamboard in the past. And you can see here, it can be, again, like people can brainstorm, it's a little more visual, but then it still gives you like these prompt kind of deals. Um, so what like when Lindsay was saying with the Miro one, you can, um, Google like Jamboard templates, right? And get a lot of different templates and then create a copy into your Google account and use the templates to create activities or brainstorming sessions with the team. Okay, so um, Google Docs is another one that you can of course create collaborative documents. I'm not gonna harp on this one because I feel like it's one that we all use a lot, right? Um, but creating an editable link to agenda, notes, an activity for a meeting, you can have prompts on it, right? A worksheet, a conference, um, then you can, it can give a lot of power, right? Of creating collaborative collaboration in an online environment. Because it is a blank document, literally, you can create your own structure, right? But that also creates a challenge, right? It is a blank document. So you need to think about how are people gonna use it? And what Lindsay was talking about with the Jamboard, it's the same problem with this, right? It's really kind of all or nothing. Uh, so use it cautiously, like a hundred person is the limit on the document, but that's a lot. A hundred people on one Google doc can get pretty out of hand, right? In terms of how the tech shifts around and moves um, in that way. So again, I think it's better for smaller spaces, right? Um, so an example that I have here is that this is an editable link that I send to a class that is online that we do an activity on lateral reading, right? Evaluating sources by opening up browsers and checking the sources. So um, in a breakout room, I can send them a link to this an editable link, and then they have these prompts and then they can just, you know, return and start, you know, right, and just add into here. Um, so again, like for me, this is really something I don't wanna do with a huge space. Like I help run those national webinars for um, that ACRL um, ULS thing. And there's like hundreds of people on them. And we inevitably always have a librarian who's like, well, I want it to be interactive, which is like fine, but with 300 people, 
and you have like 10 Google Docs going on, it's a lot. Um, and the Google Docs get pretty overwhelming. So I would just be cautious of, you know, how you use anything like this, but particularly something where like it can really be a free for all um, in that space. Um, so then Lindsay points out an option for this, my German professor had it set so that when we clicked the link to open a Google Doc worksheet, we had to make a copy to edit it. Yeah, so you can force a copy of any, um, a Google Sheet, a Google Doc, things like that. Um, and that can be really useful. So to force, I mean, I just always do force a copy. Um, they give you instructions when you Google it. So you just open the Google Doc, click share, um, and then um, you get that anyone with the link, but then at the end, instead of you um, replace the word edit to copy don't use quotation marks <laughs> yeah um, and then that forces a copy and then you can share that link to a group or anyone and then they can create their own document um, this is also a good um, tip or trick for like if you're sharing slides working as a group like we just did virtual orientations for faculty and staff and like i wanted liaisons to feel like they could make their own edits to it add their own picture things like that so we forced a copy of the slides so that they could make their own and like make edits to it as they sell sell fit So that is how to force a copy. And that's a, that's a great technique for collaborating online, especially with students or in a group where you don't want everyone on their own document, you want them to feel free um, to do it that way. So it sounds like a lot of y'all have used Padlet. Um, and again, it's another virtual bulletin board situation. Um, so it, again, visually create space for suggestions. Um, it, it has a similar structure to Trello, but it also you can set up different structures. So there's like cascading, um, lines in that way, you know, lots of different layouts, right? So it can be useful in terms of all the different layouts. But the challenges of that are like what Lindsay was saying too, they're more editable. So once you make an editable link, you can have these anonymous posts. Like, I think there was like years ago when I first started here, we used, I think it was Padlet, right? With like a first year student group and like the students were putting stuff like boobs and stuff in there. And like, so like, you can get stuff like that in any of these, right? Um, and then the problem with things like this too is like when they do stuff like that, it's like harder to delete it quickly, right? But this is a problem that you could have with any group that would feel the need to put like boobs in a, um, but yeah, I clearly remember you butthole. <laughs> Great. So yeah, it was something like that. I thought, I mean, maybe I was in a different one, Jenny, where someone put boobs and I was like, wow, so unique, like. <laughs> Anyway, so that is a problem. Um, and again, with a Google Doc, you can actually delete it pretty quickly, right? Whereas a Padlet, it's a little bit harder to get in there and delete it right away. So I actually, um, I have Padlet opened up and I'm going to show you all Padlet in a little bit. But um, Padlet, again, it's been around long enough that if you Google like educational activities in Padlet, there's tons of stuff out there that you can get inspiration from or make a copy of because people can make their Padlets um, public. So here's an example of a Padlet, a public Padlet on ways to use Padlet in the classrooms, right? Um, so, um, you know, this person shared this, right, in this way where I could then share it, star it, um, all of this stuff. So it looks like this one is not editable, um, but I could remake it, um, create a copy of it if I'm logged into Padlet. So you can see here, right, like share your creative lesson ideas with other teachers. And then um, as people go, right, um, people could go down here and say, trying it out. It looks like it's a great tool, right? Like so on and so on. But then you can see here that some people get pretty silly with it too. Um, it does allow space like in their cards to create, you know, these like GIFs, GIFs, whatever you want to say. Um, and uh, so it can add this little visual pop um, in a lot of different ways. So here's my Padlet. I don't use it as much as I used to because I, I tend to use these other like Google tools. Um, but when I was using it a lot, I was using it more like asynchronously um, where I, when I was teaching online um, with uh, LIS, I would have students share their, um, they had to create a website on Makerspaces and I would have them like share their um, 
website ideas with the class. It's like an introduction board. So I'm going to show this real quick because it's not like confidential information, um, but I used it with my kinesiology EDD um, orientations as a flipped model where I would send them an editable link to the board ahead of time, and then they would fill out the cards to introduce themselves um, and say their names, you know, what cohort they're in, and then their research interests. Um, so I usually send them editable links and I send them my card, right? Like, and I say my interest, you know, my research interest, and then they can fill it out. And this is a good way for me to get to know my like smaller cohort of kin EDD students, right? Um, but um, in the past too, a lot of them will also add pictures so I can kind of meet them virtually before we do these like sessions. Um, so it sounds like a lot of us have already used Padlet. Um, so I'm not going to like go into a huge detail, but you can join a Padlet. But to make a Padlet, you just click this button. Um, they're going to try to get you to upgrade, right? <laughs> um, so we see you are, so let me see, I haven't done this in a while. I don't want to upgrade. Oh, I'm over limit. Okay, so you can only make nine Padlets at a time. Um, they're always like changing this. So what I do is I just export the results um, and then I delete one and then I create one. Um, so I'm going to delete this one because I don't think I need it anymore or archive it. Let's see if that works. And now I can make one. So they do give you this option of wall, stream, grid, shelf, map, canvas, um, timeline. And you can see here visually what the different ones could possibly look like. Um, shelf is pretty popular. That was like their traditional one. But again, a lot of them can work differently. Um, note that if you're using this in live time, it does kind of move around. So be careful of, you know, any kind of like neurodivergence that might be going on in your classroom or that kind of movement that's going on live might make them feel nauseous or uncomfortable. Um, so those are kind of things to be aware of with these kind of things using them in live time. But when you make them right, you title it, you describe it, you can um, change the background. So like if I want to um, pick a picture, right, change it to a different color, you can do all of that right here. Um, but you can also you can also upload your own wallpaper if you have like something from Canva. Um, but notice here you um, once you make it, that's when you can then um, share it. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, um, you will see Padlet next and then you can start posting right um but then here you can um, make a copy of it but then here's where you're going to share and just pay attention right right now it's privacy so only people who i invite into this padlet right but if i change privacy i can change it from secret to public private whatever works for you i'm going to make this public um visitors can um edit Right. Whereas you can't have it where visitors can just write and at view posts, but they can't edit other posts. So you do have a little bit of flexibility in how you share the link. Yeah. So um, Jenny said shelf is a little more stable because you set up columns. Yeah. Yeah. Motion sickness. Yeah. I think this is a good point because. Um, and I've heard students actually say in like these live sessions, like, oh, I don't like this, you know, so yeah, just keep it in mind. It's things are constantly changing. That's why I actually lately typically use Padlet, like I send it out ahead of time and have them fill out prompts. Um, and then we like look at it in class together. I don't typically use it live anymore because of that motion issue and because of the like editing issue. Okay. So the last thing I was going to talk about um, before we we're going to like do more sharing, and then I want to bring up what Lindsay said, um, mirror mirror thing. He probably say mirror ball, but I don't think that's what it was called. <laughs> I think that's a song or something. Um, but the next thing is Google Chat. Um, so like I'm assuming everyone here uses um, Google Chat. Um, if anyone chatted me, um, it's going to show up. But you all know it's chat.google.com. Um, does anyone not use it? Um, if so, like, let me know and I can do a brief little tour. But the thing I wanted to point out in terms of online collaboration is that there are some stuff that you can add to it or do to it that um, allows you to create kind of group spaces. So have, have, I think we actually have a um, channel 
and I'm just bad and haven't been on it, but we do stuff on, you know, Discord and Slack, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, they have now created spaces, right, um, in terms of uh, chats where you can create a group chat room with your um, a, a committee, a group of coworkers, et cetera. And then from there, you can set up the notifications, what makes you feel comfortable. So for example, in ROI, um, we have two chat spaces that I have set up for us as online learning librarians, one called ROI chat, where we can share stuff that might come up on chat, chat with each other and then stuff that might be related to what we're doing as liaisons but then everyone within roi of course is in both of these chats um so then if i'm like well i want to only hear about this certain ways you um could i could leave i'm not going to leave it um i could pin it um i could mark it as red etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so from there, then if you're like, oh, what did we talk about in terms of like i think leah didn't you the other day post something about zombies um the the movie <laughs> Um, from Disney, I could go here and see like what conversations have we had about the um, zombies franchise and I could be like, oh yeah, this is cool. I can pull up this um, YouTube video on zombies. Um, so that's just an example of how it could be used. So here's like, you know, all the groups I'm a part of. Um, you can see here, like if they're restricted or public groups, you can add tasks, right, files. So I could assign people in my group things um, that hook up with Google Task, um, as well as upload files. You can, when you chat, right, um, mention someone. So if I, you know, um, use the at symbol, I could say, you know, hey, Audrey, I want to do something. You can see if Audrey's online and available. Um, I always set my chat default to away because sometimes I forget to put it up. <laughs> um, but I can say that I'm here or I could say leave it up and say do not disturb and you won't get the ping, right, um, if you don't have it up. Um, but just again, I wanted to really just show this group space thing. Again, I'm sure most of us are in a group space at this point, but it can be a like alternative to collaborating online asynchronously through a chat feature that's a little bit different and more Google friendly than something like um, uh, Slack. Any questions about um, Google chat? So yeah, um, Jenny points out maybe because I've used it more, but I find Google Spaces to be a lot easier than Discord channels. I just have like I think like what Jenny's saying. I just haven't used Discord and Slack as much as I've used Google in my life. Um, so um, you know, like I <laughs> feel more comfortable like getting a notification from these um, spaces than I do the other spaces um, as well. Um, a nice feature too of like Google, I mean, I guess it could be a negative, but because it integrates with, um, you know, uh, Google apps, if someone shares like a slideshow or something in it, um, it does like embed, right? Um, but then it, um, I'm trying to find like, like a link to like a slide or something. Um, it would you could then open it up right next to it. But it, you can see here it does allow you to share like screenshots and stuff. Are there any questions about Google Chats? Here's us welcoming Candace. Okay, so here's like an example. I shared this LibGuide thing, right? Um, that opens it up in a new tab, but you can also open it like next to the chat, open in chat. See where then you have your chat going on, but then you can look at the Google Doc at the same time. And then you could open it up if that bothers you. Yeah. So Lindsay said, I like chat Slack because it is a little more organized and things are separated out so you can find important tidbits more quickly than in chat. In theory, Discord should be the same, but for some reason I can't figure it out. I think it's just like interesting how our brains all work differently in this way. Um, and then Leah said, good strategy, leaving Gchat set to a way I use to set custom statuses and then I'd forget to change it. Great. Yeah, I just, like I said, like similar to what Lee is saying, I just would forget to turn mine off. And then I would like, like sometimes a student can find you or something, right? And then you're like, oh no, like they, did they think I was like on chat at 9 p.m. at night or whatever. So anyway, I just leave it in a way for now. And that's where I'm at in my life, even though I'm on it right now. 
as you can see. Um, so some things is you can set notifications, like if the dings bother you, if you're in a work group space where you're like, oh, this doesn't work for me and the way my brain works, you can turn off the notifications, you can change things that way. Um, you can add them, you need to add people and remove them as needed, um, you know, right? There's not as easy ways to like share a link to it, but you can share a link to it to be able to join. Um, and they are, do default to private spaces, which again, can usually be good for like a work environment. Okay, so lastly, we can we're gonna get on a jam board and talk about online collaboration. Um, I trust you all to behave. Um, and then with the next fifteen, and then I'm also gonna open up. Um, so y'all can start participating in this. I gave you instructions. Here's the link to it. Um, but there's an example of stuff, and you can start adding to it. But as people are joining that for fun. I'm going to open up, um, Lindsay, I'm going back in the chat to mirror board. Okay, so here's mirror board, which um, I do want to bring up um, as a good, um, this to me looks great in terms of um, teamwork, collaborating online, maybe all alternative, has different features to a lot of the stuff we talked about today. Um, as Lindsay mentioned, it looks like you need to sign up for free, right? Um, usually when you do this, um, you can just say accept all cookies, play around with it. Sometimes what I like to do, I don't know, Lindsay, um, I'm sure you did this, is I like to look at the difference between the free and the business just to make sure I understand what I'm getting. Um, so yeah, it looks like you can have three boards, pre-made templates, um, and then if you upgraded, right, this is the stuff you would get. So you can log in, create it, but it looks like you can create these like, ooh, these little visual diagrams. I love it. I'm just looking at the pictures. Ooh, brainstorming. So yeah, I think this looks great. I'm gonna try it out after this. I think Lindsay said she would be willing to show us. Can we? Yeah, Lindsay, let me make that? you. Lindsay, sorry, Lindsay, if you don't wanna do that, you don't have to. I just thought it would be helpful. Yeah, no, I'm happy to. I have. I don't know if it'll let me make a new board because I just realized I have three, but I can definitely show the one was from a conference and then the other two are ones that I created, but um, it says this uh, disabled participant screen. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> Co-host. Okay. Up recording. Oh my gosh. No, it was that I had it was hovering on the share <laughs> button. Me... It moved. I know. Okay. I'm like always like, uh. So this um, is what it looks like when you log in. Um, and if you create a new board, yeah, because I have um, my three boards already, that's fine. Um, so it's a little bit similar to what Sam was saying about Padlet being like a little bit motion sicknessy um, when you get into it. But here are all these different like templates that you can use. And some of them are, um, are free and some of them are paid for. And of course, all the like super awesome ones are paid for. Um, this is one of the ones that I really wanted to use was this stickies pack. And I'll show you how I used it in a minute. Um, but yeah, they have some really, really cool templates that you can use. Um, the thing that is sort of motion sicknessy about it, um, you have to make an account, but um, oh, I guess you can probably all just view this without making an account. Sorry, I haven't used it in a couple of weeks. Um, so I use, I'm teaching an online LIS foundations of whatever, whatever library information archival, blah, 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 <clears throat> um, at my alma mater this summer. And so I was using this. So this, you set like where you want them to log into. And so this was the first time we used it. This is where they were logging in. Um, and then, like I said, it's a little motion sicky. So I'm, I'm gonna zoom out right now. Um, by using my scrolly wheel. And then I'm going to drag by um, clicking with the right link and dragging. And it sort of tells you um, what to do as it's your first time using it. But so yeah, we use this for a couple different things. So I'm going to go up here to frame one and you can just create whatever frames you want and you can set um, you can set whatever you want to be like the login screen when they get there. But yeah, so they just started with a simple question. Then we did this guy, which this would be re really easy to recreate in Jamboard. But like I said, these um, these bits are all locked so that they can't accidentally delete or move them. Um, and then 
I, like I said, I really wanted to use the stickies thing because they were supposed to talk about how librarians demonstrate the ALA core values. And so, you know, I wanted to have a couple of examples of each one. So these are each of the core values is a different color. And then I had however many sticky notes and they could go on and, and fill it out. Um, once I learned how to use it a little better, here's another option. This was another template I used. So I just renamed these and you can see, I looks like these are bold and these aren't. So I'm, I'm still learning, um, but then you can set like little like um, uh, words over here so they can, you know, put different things in different sections related to whatever. And then, yeah, you can, you can draw these little arrows to connect them. So it's very similar to Jamboard, um, but with a lot more functionality. Um, there's like a timer up here that you can use. <clears throat> that might be a, a pro feature, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I love it. Mm. That's cool. I'm going to create an account after this. Um, Sam, I'll, I'll, I'll post for everybody too. I should probably have showed it before I logged out. I'll post the one that was from my conference too, in case that's useful to folks. I just yeah, have to definitely. go back and find it. Is it like one of those things too, similar to like a uh, Jamboard that you could like Google like idea, you know, like ideas for mirror mirror boards? Um, yeah, I think it's probably I'm a, a big little fan less of well known. People, mm -hmm. yeah, it's that's what's great about all the templates. Like, there's so many templates on there. You can just look at how other folks are using it mm -hmm. um, and copy them. But yeah, here's the one from I don't rem remember what conference it was, and there's like. If you scroll way out, if you open that one, because you'll see that there's like so many different pages on that guy. Great. As people are thinking about other questions um, and Lindsay's sharing um, Miro links, just I already love the stuff going on here. So collaborative project planning on Trello, um, create a shareable board during an instructional session, post a Google Doc meeting agenda so coworkers can add items. Love it love it all. I love all those things. So what is a challenge? Sometimes it results in a chaotic amount of content, but that can also be in trouble. I agree. I mean, that's another thing is that um, I actually like went on a spiral the other day when I was creating the slideshow of like negatives of online collaboration. And I was like, Ugh, this is just too much. <laughs> but that was one of them, right? Is that sometimes like it's not necessary to move a meeting along and to get things talking. You don't always need it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Like, I think, I don't know, I don't have a study to back me up and y'all can correct me, but like, I think people are kind of like breakout room tired. <laughs> so like, like I've been in a couple of ACRL meetings where they say something about turning on a breakout room and like everyone leaves. <laughs> so I think it's just sometimes like thinking about your audience, thinking about the like virtual fatigue that's going on right now. Um, you don't always have to do it. Um, yeah, so someone said posting is sometimes so easy. My excitement gets ahead of my grammar. That is so me. That's like also me with like texting and chatting. I'm like, oh, I just spelled there wrong. <laughs> um, so that is definitely me a hundred percent. Um, yeah. So Lindsay said, yeah, breakout rooms by like, I was in one where it was like all these like ACL people and literally they're like breakout rooms. And I mean, everyone left, but like 10 people. <laughs> it was so, I was like, oh no. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, if y'all ever, we talked about mirror board, I'll add this mirror boards. Love it. So yeah, someone said Canva. Um, so Canva can be, you can create like, um, you know, spaces, um, you know, so like you, like we do have a ROI Canva space where you could then make copies of what people have done in Canva. Um, I have personally not seen Canva used like in live time like this, um, like sharing links. I think it's more of a like presentation graphic design tool. So it's not necessarily set up in the same way of Google apps of like sharing editable links, but you can share links to like view, you can add it, you can create groups of people working together on these graphic design documents. Um, so it can be used to collaborate, um, but I consider it definitely like a lot of um, graphic, graphic design ones. So yeah, if that helps. Okay. I always like accidentally leave an extra card um, on my jam boards too. I guess that's something I need to work on. Great. 
Well, hopefully you can see too how Jamboard could kind of be used to put prompts. Notice you could, um, I'm happy to make a copy of this for you, um, but you can, when you're on a Jamboard, be on it and say, make a copy, and then it's in your space. And then uh, you could change the prompts if you like this, right? Um, add your own Go link to an editable link, um, et cetera. Um, Jamboard is just one thing for sure. Um, Lindsay, I wonder with like, you know, the coming of like Miro board and stuff like that, if they'll get better at like making better templates, you know what I mean? Like pre-designed templates. Like I wonder if I hope so. Um, so yeah, I used Miro board the first couple of weeks and then I had a couple students that like have a, a harder time with access because they're in like real remote areas. Oh, okay. So it's hard for them to use like with the logging in. So I've used Jamboard more, but mm -hmm. the thing I don't like about Jamboard is if I try to do that, like three columns thing, which we mm -hmm. do a lot. Yeah, like the the sticky notes are kind of like all one size, you know, like they get bigger if you write more, but like mm -hmm. then it's not going to fit in in one column. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, so. the, the 50 person limit is like, a th you know what I mean? Like so like you can do it. I mean, 50 is probably good for Jamboard because like I feel like if you had like 100 people on there adding sticky notes, mm -hmm. it would get like silly. Crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you know, it's like I would one of those national webinars I did, um, they uh we don't allow breakout rooms, but they did do they did 10 Google Docs, right? And then they made everyone so it was like A through like last name A through F, go to this Google Doc. La you know, and I mean it worked, but it was still like a lot. A lot. <laughs> like it was a lot of um cognitive load, you know. Yeah. Um, and I was like as as someone watching it, like I was a moderator for it, I was like, is this really worth it? Like, you know, for like group work in a in a large space. So again, that kind of question of like, what is the learning objectives of this online session, meeting, instruction mm -hmm. session? And like, does this add to it? Um, and like Jenny, you're talking about doing breakout rooms and in instruction. I think that's totally fine because you're having them like. I've seen you do it, like go in groups, um, talk it out. But like sometimes, again, for these like national ACRL things, you're like, is it like really helpful to talk in groups, or is this just gonna like again annoy everyone? Um, so. Sometimes in the in in the supervisor, uh, the HR supervisor meetings. Um, they'll they'll be like we're gonna do breakout rooms and then it's like oh i everyone is like oh no i've been called away <laughs> like, <laughs> i can't, I can't like, do this someone just walked in my office and i oh, like, no, it's, a, it's an emergency sorry no way i can no. be in this like breakout room yeah that well and when they did that big acrl breakout room thing that i'm talking about um it was in like the height of the pandemic and like my kids were there and i mean i was like i'll go to be a team player but i like left my camera off i was like i don't feel comfortable having my kids in a national meeting you know like i was like and then like everyone in my session was the same they were it was all you know it's librarian so it was like a lot of caregivers in a room being like i don't feel comfortable turning my camera on because of these things you know and you're like that's totally fair so anyway um that's why i thought again looking at these like asynchronous like people can kind of go at their own pace collaborative things um could be a good alternative to talking about um zoom breakout rooms which i think are great and necessary um sometimes um i don't hate all breakout rooms i just i don't like them i guess on a large scale <laughs> and and if there's no purpose right like if it's just like for the sake of a breakout room. So anyway, well, we're like almost right at three. So great, we had great timing on this. Thank you all for participating. Thank you, Lindsay, for sharing a new tool um, that many of us learned about today, um, me included. Um, please let us know if you have any questions um, about these things. If I don't know the answer, I will connect you to someone in ITS who is, um, better at this stuff than me. Um, but yeah, and if y'all have any ideas for other topics, like about stuff that helps us with our work online um, or in person, but it's like an online tool, uh, let me know if y'all want to do a session for y'all VLC, let us know. Um, but have a great week, y'all. First week of classes. Yay. So great. Bye, everyone. <laughs>